Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god, hey. So, if you could not tell from the way I am dressed, I just got back from a press performance of Cabaret in the West End at the Playhouse Theatre, aka the Kit Kat Club, starring Eddie Redmayne, Jesse Buckley. It is undeniably the hottest ticket in town right now, not least of all because they are wildly expensive. I was very kindly invited by my friend Daz, aka All That Dazzles. If you're not following him on Twitter and social media and his blog for all of his reviews and his stagey content, you absolutely should be. He's one of my favorite people to be at a press night with and one of my favorite stagey friends. He very kindly invited me to be his plus one to tonight's press night and I was so, so pleased to be there. So I've been so excited to see this production because not only is the casting completely first rate, this is one of my top 10 favorite musicals of all time. I've seen so many different productions, but they also have completely rebranded the Playhouse Theatre, completely redesigned the auditorium and the interior, and they've made it an entire immersive production where the audience now go in this different entrance. I've walked past it so many times and been so intrigued, but it's also very secretive because when you get inside, they put a little sticker over your phone camera and they don't like anyone to share the secrets. So even though I was not able to take a camera inside with me and I was very respectful of that policy, I am going to be letting you know what it's like inside the Kit Kat Club. So this little explanation and review of the immersive experience and the performance is going to be heavily laden with spoilers because for me to tell you all about what I thought of this, I have to tell you about the details, okay? I thought about a way of doing this spoiler free, but really I have to be able to share the details with you, okay? So if you don't want spoilers for this production, click away right now. I'm going to be giving you my full review of both the show and the experience, and as well as that, because I was given this very snazzy souvenir brochure as part of my press ticket, I am going to be doing a giveaway of that as well. They didn't have these at the early preview performances. I think tonight may have been the first night they were selling them. It is huge. There's my head for scale. It has not only beautiful pictures of the cast and beautiful production photos, it has information about all the cast, it has bios, it has information on the background to the show. We've got a very interesting interview between Rebecca Frecknell, the director, and John Kander, one of the composers. It's really an incredibly aesthetic program and it's going to be very inconvenient for me to post. So if you want to win this program, usual rules apply. Look in the description for more information. Comment down below with hashtag Mickey Joe giveaway. Look out for a post you can share on Twitter and on Instagram. To get extra entries, make sure you are subscribed to my channel and you've liked this video. So what can I tell you about Cabaret at the Kit Kat Club? Let's start by talking about the experience in the theatre. So there's this long queue outside. You are asked to show proof of a negative lateral flow test. Once you have, it's very easy. They let you in. You go in through the stage door of the Playhouse Theatre, not through the front of house. It's all blacked out. You cannot see inside. You go down this very cool little set of stairs. You go like through the bowels of the theatre. There's some really funky lighting. It's all very atmospheric. There's like paintings and murals on the walls. You go past a little person with a window who is giving out a free shot to everyone at every performance. This is not a press ticket thing. Everyone gets a free shot of their choice to celebrate being at the Kit Kat Club. You can either have beer, schnapps, or water, depending on your preference. I had the schnapps, it was lovely. You then arrive in what I believe is the Red Bar, where there is a whole lot of immersive stuff going on. So as well as the main cast for this show, they have a prologue company. And this is another cast of performers who give you a little pre-show vibe. You know, they're around the theater, they're doing music, they're doing dance, they're doing various things, just sort of setting the scene, making it really immersive, atmospheric, and really cool. And helping justify the insane ticket prices. Just, oh my gosh. At the bar, you can get your drinks. You can also get Toblerone and pretzels. It's all very Bavarian. Just giving you that Berlin nightclub energy. Upstairs, you have the gold bar. And about half an hour before the show, this is where a lot of the performers from the Prologue Company congregate to dance on the bar. And I mean, dance on the bar. I thought a woman was about to get kicked in the head for trying to order a champagne. There's a little balcony area as well. Just the design of this foyer area and how they've completely, I couldn't tell you for the longest time where I was in that theater because of how they've moved everything around. It's completely insane. The way they have reworked and reimagined this space is 
mind-blowing. It can get quite crowded in the main gold bar, but there are some other little places to sort of hide away if you don't want to be around that many people right now. Then you go up to the main auditorium. Now we were sat at the front of the dress circle. I think I was in A9, but from what I could tell, it seemed as though almost every seat that I could see would have a great view of the stage. And the Playhouse Theatre in days gone by has had some horrible sight lines, I will say. So really interesting to see how changed that was for this production. I really appreciated that. So if you're someone who's bought a ticket sort of higher up in the theatre, don't be too concerned. I feel like you're also going to have a great view. Now, the people who are at the cabaret tables, I didn't see any of the food, like the meal that you can also opt into or the champagne that they could get. But I did see them get pulled up on stage sort of towards the end of the interval by some of the ensemble from the main show company who were sort of milling around in the foyer area and in the auditorium in the stalls. They pull them up, they do a little dance with them on stage, and there's also a lot of performer interaction with the people in the cabaret tables around the stage because they walk on and off through the auditorium constantly. Now, I'm a huge, huge fan of Cabaret. It's one of my favourite shows of all time. I think it's a masterpiece of musical theatre. I've watched so many different recordings and iconic productions. This is a five-star production of this show. That's not to say that everything it did was my favourite version. I don't think it's necessarily completely definitive, but I felt as though it stood alone from a lot of the other productions that have been done. It made such bold, original and unique choices. It was a complete reinterpretation, reimagining, reinvention of the show. It wasn't in any way reliant on any of the groundwork done by previous directors. This was just a new version of the show, which I really appreciated. I'm already a fan of Rebecca Frecknell, the director. I loved her production of Summer and Smoke in the West End a little while ago that transferred from the Almeida. I thought that was genius. I think she She's a director that has a really strong visual sense and just really commits to a concept and I really enjoy that. This kind of theatre is exactly the kind of thing that I love. Classic musical revivals done edgy and raw and contemporary and just immediate and passionate and just the whole aesthetic with all of the dark wood tones. I could gush about this endlessly. And I will. I also want to shout out Tom Scutt, the designer, because the costume design, very specific in this show. They make a lot of bold aesthetic choices. So you have the Kit Kat Club scenes where they're wearing these sort of very Bavarian burlesque outfits, but sort of in these neutral tones. It's giving you a sense of the time period. It's giving you a sense of sort of the class element of it as well. Whoever made the wigs on this production, astounding work because Sally Bowles has like a wig moment where she takes it off and it's like, oh, that was a wig. And then even after that, I'm looking at Eddie Redmayne's hair and I'm like, is that a wig? Is that actually his dyed hair because it looks so convincing at the back of his head. No, that's that's a hairline. Oh, it was a wig. And then you see him in different hair later and I'm like, but is that now his real hair? And no, I think that's also a wig, but it became impossible to tell because the quality of the wigs, so good. The way they commit to makeup, it's very similar to the makeup that is seen on the cabaret dancers in Bob Fosse's film version, where it's sort of this war paint that they're using to obscure their real sense of self because what they're doing in the club sort of brings them this sense of shame and they're not doing it because they want to, they're doing it because of the financial necessity, just to read a little bit into it there. Something very interesting happens as the show progresses where it becomes increasingly drab and towards the end of the show, and this is a big spoiler, you see everyone come out in these sort of beige brown colored suits. And that's also what Sally Bowles wears, a very oversized misshapen suit to sing Life is a Cabaret, which is incredibly unexpected if you're expecting to see a lovely Liza Minnelli strapless purple halter neck gown. She's not giving you glamour, not in that moment. There's some incredibly chilling moments as well, like it's as dark as any version of Cabaret I've ever seen before, but it sort of instills that darkness rather than hitting you over the head with it. There's not as much obvious imagery about the impending threat of fascism and Nazism. You know, there's no giant puppeteer hands, there's no huge swastikas, there's no saluting. It's a lot subtler and I think the audience is smart enough to know what is happening here, what time period we're in, what the impending sense of threat is for all of these characters and how it's going to affect them individually, that we don't need to be hit over the head with that. I think that was a smart choice. The attention to detail as well is just so, so good. Like Jesse Buckley was wearing this slip as Sally Bowles that had a tear in it that either was deliberate or she's just going that hard in the show that she tore her dress. I also loved the set 
The set was in the round, so you have audience in front of and behind the stage with the band sort of split between two boxes in the circle on either side. You had these pillars, you had parts where the uh, cast members were leaning over the side or standing up on things. The actual stage itself was circular and it was made up of three concentric circles that revolve and also come up at different levels. There were moments where I felt like that was getting overused a little bit. There was a point where every single song that the MC, Eddie Redmayne, was in, they used that at the dramatic moment. And I think there were other stage coming up moments that would have been more impactful if there hadn't been so many that had come before them. But very clever uses of the revolve, very clever uses of staging as well. Occasionally during the first act, there were moments where I thought the songs are so well staged. When we go to some of the book scenes, especially with Fräulein Schneider and Herr Schultz, it's just kind of set. It just kind of happens. And the brilliance and the genius of staging everything within that club environment doesn't pay off if you're not going to find a way to make those scenes work. I think there has to be more to it than yeah, the club scenes, we're in a club, so that's perfect. And then for the book scenes, just do it on the stage. Just do the scene, but just stand on the stage and do it. I wanted there to be more for some of them. And for some of them, there was a funny and clever little conceit of how they were making that work. I just wanted more imagination and more cleverness because there were plenty of brilliant ideas. Some of the scenes, it felt like, oh, that scene will just do as normal and there's nothing really special for that. I wanted more because there were so many wonderful things in the rest of the show. Okay, there were some performances in this show, like Olivier Awards, watch out. Eddie Redmayne is obviously the big draw in this cast. He is a celebrity. He is a movie star doing a show on the West End. He said that the MC is a role he's always wanted to play, and you can really see that in his performance. He is committing wholeheartedly. He is giving 100,000% from the moment he comes out on stage. He makes some interesting character choices where it's sort of Richard III-esque, where he has this strange physicality and this strange sort of voice and he's swallowing a lot of his lines the audience really respond to it I don't know if it would work if you didn't already know the show because he's not giving you like crystal clear like feel calm and bienvenue welcome so like, real calm and bienvenue welcome like because you know the words it's fine and he gets away with it. I started to understand his choices more towards the end of the show when he gives you a different physicality and then snaps back into the MC and I was like, oh, that's quite insidious. There's a lot of parts of the show that are very sinister and his performance has these beautiful grotesque moments, which I think is very important in an MC character because he is representative of the city of Berlin. He is kind of the soul of the place that is becoming increasingly warped and uncomfortable and twisted. It has a sort of wonderful debauchery at the beginning that you feel very welcomed by, and then you soon find that there is a sort of wicked underbelly to all of that, and it becomes uncomfortable. His interactions with the rest of the cast were brilliant. He really led it in a very powerful way, but when he wasn't on stage and Jesse Buckley was, she stole it right out of his hands. Jesse Buckley is mind-blowingly good as Sally Bowles. So Jesse Buckley was a finalist on I'd Do Anything, the TV show searching for an actress to play Nancy in Android Webber's revival of Oliver. She was competing alongside Samantha Barks and Rachel Tucker and Jodie Prenger and Amy Booth Steele. What a TV show that was. After that, she went on to do some roles in musical theatre. She was in a little night music in the West End. She did some Shakespeare. She has then had a nice career doing films and sort of gaining more and more acclaim. I have been waiting for people to sit up and take note of Jessie Buckley because she is incredibly underrated as an actress and I've been waiting for her huge role to bring her back to musical theatre. When she was announced as Sally Bolton this, I lost my damn mind and I became prepared to pay anything for tickets. Eddie Redmayne, fine, that's exciting to a lot of people. Jessie Buckley as Sally Bowles is what convinced me. She does not disappoint. She is astonishingly good. Just the range of what she gives you in this show. I've always admired a Sally Bowles, who is not necessarily the world's best singer because she's not a world-class performer. She's performing at a CD nightclub in Berlin and she has no money. She's sort of bed hopping man to man in order to make ends meet. I've really enjoyed recordings of Natasha Richardson's performance for that same reason. You know, she's not a vocalist first. Jessie Buckley is an incredible singer but primarily she is a wonderful actress who knows when to use her voice and how. So she gives you some of the nightclub performance songs like Don't Tell Mama and Mine Hair that are not the cleanest or prettiest vocal moments. And then she gives you some incredible vocals and she gives you various shades in between in other songs. She gives you all out physicality where she is just throwing energy and then she gives you utter stillness. The genius moment that is maybe this time is just an instant. She's having this conversation with Cliff and then genius director Rebecca Frecht 
Hucknall has maybe this time done as just a split second. We come out of that moment and she sings maybe this time within an instant and then goes back and she barely moves. She turns her head slightly to address different parts of the auditorium and just sort of lives in that moment and considers it and then goes back into the scene. And it's so still and it's so momentary and it's so fleeting. Whereas life as a cabaret, is this huge journey where she begins singing it in this sort of very empty, sardonic way where she's literally like, what good is sitting alone in your room? Which turns on its head the idea of this iconic, oversung standard. It becomes this throwaway, low effort moment that kind of deceives the audience. By the end of it, I can barely even talk about it. It's mesmerizingly good, the way that she performs this song. The physicality she throws in it, the way she smears her lipstick over her face, she is just balls to the walls in this performance. It is guttural, it is raw, it is passionate. It is everything I like to see in a theatre performance. I have no idea how the hell she does it every night of the week. The applause that comes after Life as a Cabaret, there is so much recognition from the audience. How incredible that performance was. Worth the price of admission alone. I was ready to give her the Olivier in the interval. By the end of the show, I was ready to rename the Olivier after her. That's how good this performance was. I also want to shout out the supporting cast. I thought Stuart Clark gave another phenomenal performance. Always an incredibly reliable performer, always a standout in the cast. As Ernst Ludwig, he doesn't get the most exciting role in the show, but just a really strong performer, always. Liza Sadovi, incredible as Fraulein Schneider. She gets a really beautiful role. She gets some lovely moments and did it absolute justice. Elliot Levi as Herr Schultz. This is not normally a role I sit up and pay attention to, but found beautiful subtleties in every one of his lines and his relationship with Frau Schneider. I've never seen that played so beautifully, so warmly. The audience was really rooting for them to bang, which I've not experienced before. Normally it's like, ah, oh, cute older couple, but this was just like, I was a little hot. Brilliantly clever and just utterly dumb of Rebecca Frecknell to have the way he puts the pineapple back into the bag and she holds the bag open so innately sexual. And from that moment on, the audience is completely clued into what their relationship is. That is genius. That is just pure genius that I don't know who would think of that but it's hilarious and wonderful. And Anna Jane Casey, can we talk about Anna Jane Casey? I mean, legend of musical theatre that she is. I don't think anyone in a previous production has ever been a Kit Kat Club girl and Fraulein Cost as well, but she's pulling double duty in this show. Like she's doing all the ensemble numbers, she's kicking her legs over her head, she's dancing around the stage, leaving and then immediately coming back on as a German whore. Who has that kind of range? Not everyone. They've also added more vocal moments for her than I think Fraulein Kost usually gets to sing, either that or I'm misremembering. But um, she has some lovely bits where she's singing in German and she sings a nice reprise of Tomorrow Belongs to Me with Stuart Clark. In terms of standout numbers from the show, it's going to be many years before I forget Jesse Buckley singing Life is a Cabaret. Like, I felt myself leaning further and further forwards. I was so incredibly gripped by the way that she just demolished that number. And she did things that if you did them in a rehearsal room and if you did them in an audition would be considered way too much, but it started so small and it grew to such a height. She gives such intimate, small acting visually that becomes ferociously huge. The scale of that number and where she took it to vocally, physically, absolutely insane. I find it so hard to articulate what she did because it's such a visceral performance that you really have to experience for yourself. But she took such incredibly bold and brave risks that completely paid off. Every single moment was earned, every single moment was justified, delivered wholeheartedly, completely committed to, brilliant, breathtaking, jaw-dropping, incredible, I've run out of adjectives. Oh gosh, I could recommend this show to everyone. Any lover of musical theatre, go and see the show. Anyone who is at all interested in the Olivier Awards and wants to see the show that's going to sweep it next year, go and see this show. Any fans of Cabaret, you will not be disappointed. I'm a huge, huge fan of this show. I've loved all the productions I've ever seen for different reasons, and I've found many ways to love this one. I'm also going to say, if you're the kind of person who likes plays at the Almeida and at the Donmar, who likes edgy, interesting theatre, this is a good gateway musical for you to go and see. It's not at all like jazz handsy musical theatre. I know you may think cabaret may seem that way from the outside. It is completely raw, 
naturalistic, edgy, gripping theatre. It's all about the acting, the emotions, just incredible, brave performances. It also has an incredibly strong book. Like, that's why Cabaret has stood up for as long as it has. It has one of the best books of musical theatre for its time. There's really not enough superlatives I can use to describe this production. You know, there are elements of it where I thought more could have been done, but it's that kind of piece of theatre, you know? It's edgy, it's dirty, it's bold, it takes risks. It's not about polish and perfection. It's about making these stylistic choices, making these aesthetic choices, and you're going to vibe with some of them. Not all of them are going to make sense to you, but it's giving you a lot to think about as an audience member. It's smart, it's insightful, it's incredibly mesmerizing. Go and see this production for yourself and then you will also feel how I feel right now and you will struggle to articulate why it is so jaw-droppingly good and also just really interesting. Make sure you go and enjoy Jessie Buckley's performance so that when she is a huge, huge star of the stage and screen in years to come, you get to say, I saw her in that Olivier Award winning role. Mark my words, it's going to happen. If she doesn't win the Olivier for this, I will eat my hat. I'm not wearing a hat. I'll eat her wig. I'll eat her incredibly convincing wig. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to subscribe to my channel for plenty more stage content coming very soon. I'm at various press nights for West End musicals next week. I can't wait to tell you all about them. If there are any specific videos you would like to see on my channel, me reacting to anything, me going to see any particular shows, let me know in the comment section down below as well. Also, if you want to support me as a stagey content creator, head over to patreon.com forward slash Theatre for various exclusive photo and video content. Don't forget to enter my giveaway to win this exclusive cabaret souvenir brochure. I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For ten more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey, thanks for watching, have a stagey day. Subscribe!